Hi there. Before I start, I'll just put this up, this disclaimer. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing young profit, educational or personal use tips to balance in favour of fair use. This video was made for entertainment purposes and is transformative in nature. Can I first apologise for my one cat, Toby? I've just brought both my fur babies home today and the one cat, Bobby, was at a friend's house who's got or girl, some girls and Toby was at my son's house where he's just got my grandkids <laughs> and so when we get home Toby doesn't doesn't acknowledge me it's like how dare you leave me and then I've got Bobby moaning because he's had to leave his girlfriends behind and then when we do get home I've got Toby constantly moaning at Bobby because he can smell the females on him. So I apologise for Toby and his constant moaning before we go any further. Anyway, hope you all had a lovely day or are having a lovely day. Thank you to those all on X who are here. Thank you to those on YouTube. Please come and say hello. I don't bite. So, I have to be very careful what I say and what I post on this YouTube video. Because there have been a lot of restrictions put into place in the UK about what we can share what we can show, what we can say, right, and in one part of England, <laughs> and I can see it coming all across England, luckily I'm up in Scotland, I hope it don't come into force, but if it does, I'm prepared, but in one part of England, they brought in, brought in a law, they are actually implementing it, and if you are caught swearing, it's a hundred pound fine. No ifs, no buts. They've never implemented it before, but they are now. So for the past few days, I've been trying to learn to say F you in French. Once I've mastered it in French, I'm going to master it in Spanish and then German and then any other language I can think of. Because if they do bring that law up in Scotland, I am fecked. Because that one word is part of my vocabulary. I'm sorry if people don't agree with me for saying that, but it is. Right? But apparently that is what's happening. And apparently our Prime Minister, that everyone voted in but me, I didn't. Right, is not as backed it is saying, Yeah, implement it. That's the law, you can implement it. So they have. So, my title was Are We Safe in the UK? Threats and what Keith Starmer has to say. Well, I don't know. I'd like to, I don't feel safe at the moment because I've been hearing a lot about things going on in Scotland which I never heard of before apart from this I hadn't even heard about this uh, controversial speech this uh, ex first minister of Scotland gave in 2020 never heard it before and I've heard people going on about it lately, so I thought, I'm going to look it up. I've got to watch this video, right? And it's been about now for four years. 
because this was done in 2020. And when you think, look at Scotland, Scotland's popularity is like 90, 95, 97, 98% white. Right? I'm not saying we haven't got any, um, any other cultures in Scotland. We have. Uh, but the majority is white. So when he did this speech in 2020, I thought, and I listened to it t today, and I thought, hold oh on. How could you get away with saying that? So I want us to play that first. All right without getting blocked on YouTube and kicked off Twitter and because it is a joke. We've got Elon Musk standing up for us, bridges. <laughs> right? Standing up for us. Thank the Lord. And he's now in a a Twitter exchange fight sort of thing with our ex first minister of Scotland. And he's called him out. He said, Elon Musk literally said, take me to court. I dare you. Right? And someone asked our First Minister, what would you say, would the government pay for the lawyers of the ex-First Minister of Scotland if he went to court against Elon Musk. Our first minister said, hmm, this is comical. He turned around and said, well, that's a question for Hummus, uh, Hummus Yousaf. That's a question for him. No, 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 no. It's not a question for him. It's a question for you, the first minister of Scotland, would you be paying his court fees? Would you be paying his lawyer's fees? Out of our hard, out of our money that we are paying into the taxes, taxes through work, through pensions, everything, right? Would you be paying for his lawyer? So when you turn around and say, that's a question for whom I ask Yousaf. I don't know if I've said his name right. I probably butchered it to him. And I thought, come on, man. Just stand up. Stand up and speak your mind. Tell the... You know what I mean? You're our first minister of Scotland. You're supposed to be here for, the Scot for us in Scotland. And I just, I just can't get my head around that. How he wouldn't answer it. He's, he just put it back on Hummus, Hummus Yousaf. I don't think we should be paying for anything that guy says. If he wants to take on Elon Musk, then fair dues, let him take him on. But he pays for it. We shouldn't be paying for nothing. Right? It's like me having a squabble with someone on X and they saying, I'm going to take you, I'm going to have you for slander and take me to court. Why? Do you think Elon Musk is going to pay for my court fees because it was done on e on Twitter? Do you think I could turn around to Elon and say, uh, excuse me, but um, this squabble started on Twitter. Can you pay my court fees, please? He'll tell me where to shove it. You know what I mean? So I heard to God. The government, the Scottish government does not pay for any court fees that this ex-first minister of Scotland has to pay if he takes Elon Musk to court. Now, I'm going to show you this video and then I will tell you what Elon Musk said. All right, so I'm going to stream it. Oh, 
Oh, it's just cracks are getting down. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Here we go. So, I will start this speech and end it in the same way to say that I'm angry. I'm angry that in 2020, we're once again confronted with scenes of horrific racial injustice. I'm angry that in 2020, we're still dealing with overt racism, with subtle racism, with institutional racism, with structural racism. Whichever form it takes, it is still racism. You may well think that as time has moved on, that racism has declined, that manifestations of overt racism are no longer commonplace. I'm afraid that's not the case, presiding officer. I don't have to cast. But to be honest with you, since I've been up in Scotland, I've been up here since what, 2008. The only racism I've ever seen is towards me, and that's from two Scottish people. But it wasn't that bad where I felt intimidated, I couldn't leave my home, you know what I mean? It wasn't like that, but I have never seen any racism from any uh, of the other cultures that we have in Dundee. And there's lots of different cultures because of the universities we have here in Dundee. There's lots of different cultures and religions in Dundee. My mind back particularly far. I suspect the same is true for Anas, to somebody calling me a packy. Don't even start me on my Twitter timeline, which is frankly a cesspit of racism. I'm angry, presiding officer, because in this day and age, we're still telling people of colour to go home. Brian Whittle, what I thought was a, a really excellent contribution, says that he remembers a time in a bygone era when he would see casual racism on the TV. He doesn't have to go back to a bygone era, presiding officer. I heard it just yesterday. I saw a video clip yesterday of the social commentator and author Afua Hirsch on a panel chaired by LBC's right. Nick Ferrari. She explained her views of... I've got only two minutes of this to go. Hold on, hold on, something's gone wrong here. Yeah, that ain't right. Where's the full interview? This isn't the right one. Oh, God. Oh, let's try pulling it up again. Hold on. I'll try it again. Thoughtful speech by let's see. No, this ain't the one. <sighs> God, sorry about that. Are you joking me? I've got to ask permission to use this site. It's in the flipping UK. Oh, Oh, come on.
Mom, why is my mouse not working? Sorry about this, everyone. But my mate, I like it. Right, we just got an ad, so I'm going to just set it up again. One more cat's fight in the background. No, let's, right, let's just get this ad out of the way and then we'll be able to get on with it. Yeah, also, this is it. I will start the speech Sorry and, about and that. End it in the same way to say that I'm angry. I'm angry that in 2020, we're once again confronted with scenes of horrific racial injustice. I'm angry that in 2020, we're still dealing with overt racism, with subtle racism, with institutional racism, with structural racism. Whichever form it takes, it is still racism. You may well think that as time has moved on, that racism has declined, that manifestations of overt racism are no longer commonplace. I'm afraid that's not the case, presiding officer. I don't have to cast my mind back particularly far. I suspect the same is true. Racism, racism will only continue to exist when people like this guy here will constantly brings it up, right? When they constantly throw that racist card in. Yeah, because they don't like what they're seeing because they're not getting the jobs that the white people get. Well, perhaps you should go to school and stay at school. There's lots of white children who leave school without, you know, flipping brain cells in the head. You know what I mean? And they're in the same boat as everyone else. You want a good job, then you need to go to school, stay in school, go to college, go to uni, do whatever you need to do to get these jobs. Don't think you can skip school and then sit around on your backside all day long, be it white, black, pink, green, purple, whatever. Right? And then think, well, they get all the good jobs, why can't we? Because they went to college. They stayed in school, they went to uni, they did three years in this and three years here. So, it's, racism is only fueled by people like this, who keep bringing it up. Right? And putting it out there in the public. For Anas, to somebody calling me a packy, don't even start me on my Twitter timeline, which is frankly a cesspit of racism. I'm angry, presiding officer, because in this day and age, we're still telling people of colour to go home. Brian Whittle, what I thought was a, a really excellent contribution, says that he remembers a time in a bygone era when he would see casual racism. On the TV. Sorry he doesn't that. have to go back to a bygone era presiding officer. I heard it just yesterday. I saw a video clip yesterday of the social commentator and author Afua Hirsch on a panel chaired by LBC's Nick Ferrari. There's a reason my internet is playing up. He explained her views of needing to confront Suddenly I get live my the racism of figures in British history. And Nick Ferrari's response was, if you don't like Britain, which is her home, why do you stay? He would simply not have asked that question if a white person was sitting in the chair. But people of colour are still fair game when it comes to racism. Forget the racial jibes. Forget the slurs that we still have to put up with. Racism is literally killing minorities. You no, know, he probably said something like, if it being a white person, he'd have probably said, well, do something about it then. Get yourself into some college. 
even if you have to start from the bottom and work your way up to the point where you can get into university, even if you're 25 by the time you come out of university, do that. Work. Get your the, the degrees. Get the qualifications behind you. Hold on. As we have all seen and we have all referenced. But as everybody has mentioned, I racism mean. doesn't just exist in the United States. The events in the United States force us to hold a mirror up to ourselves and to confront the racism that exists here. The unconscious, the subtle, the overt, the institutional, the structural. On all of these fronts, Scotland is not immune. Presiding officer, this is the part where we should all begin to feel uncomfortable because we have to accept the reality and the evidence in front of us that Scotland has a problem of structural racism. As people have mentioned, take this parliament as an example. Over 300 MSPs have come and gone out of this parliament, our nation's parliament, and in 20 years, not a single black member of the Scottish Parliament. Our shame. Not a single female woman of colour to our shame. And the only four ethnic minority MSPs have Sorry, all been Scottish Asian males. And take Anas and I, we're hardly even diverse between us. Both male, both born and raised in Glasgow Southside, both in our mid-30s, both went to the same private school, both middle class. Our fathers even come from the same region in Pakistan. His father happens to be the governor of that region. My dad didn't quite get it. The, the, the Conservatives, the Greens, the Liberal Democrats, they've never had a single person of colour make up their ranks in 20 years of devolution. I don't say that to point the finger. I say that because you know we have to make change. They've never had a single MP from Scotland that has been non-white in their history. And to my colleagues on the government bench, we know that we are not immune either. Some people were surprised. They were taken aback even by the mention of my social media that 99% of the meetings I go to, I'm the only non-white person. Can't how many times it says white in this speech? in the room. But why are we so surprised? Those senior positions in Scotland are filled almost exclusively by those who are... Right. I sat there earlier before coming live and I watched this and I counted how many times he brought up the word white. I'll tell you when we finish. White. Take my portfolio alone. The Lord President, white. The Lord Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, White, the Lord Advocate, white, the Solicitor General, white, the Chief Constable, white, every Deputy Chief Constable, white, every Assistant Chief Constable, white, the Head of the Law Society, white, the Head of the Faculty of Advocates, white, every Prison Governor, white, and not just Justice, the Chief Medical Officer, white, the Chief Nursing Officer, white, the Chief Veterinary Officer, white, the Chief Social Work Advisor, white, Almost every trade union in this country headed by people who are white. In the Scottish Government, every director general is white. Every chair of every public body is white. That is not good enough. I don't doubt that if I looked across the private sector, that black and minority ethnic people would similarly be underrepresented at senior levels. This is a collective failure on every single one of us. So I hope we're sitting uncomfortably because these should be uncomfortable truths for us all. So don't just tweet Black Lives Matters. Don't post or don't just post a hashtag. Don't just take the knee. As people of colour, we don't need your gestures. Yes, solidarity is helpful. But what we need from you is action and for you to be anti-racist by your deeds. Don't just tell us how you are not a racist. I take that as a bare minimum. We must be anti-racist. Many people have rightly mentioned Sheikh Obayo in this debate. 
Let me start by saying how much I too admire the dignity of the bio family that Claire Baker referenced in her speech. They have shown great dignity uh, on their journey, on their long journey for answers. They have every right to be angry at how long they have been fighting for those answers. As the public inquiry is established, I obviously won't prejudice that inquiry. I will simply say this, that when the state is faced with such tragic circumstances, we have a choice. We either attempt to hide the truth or we go in search of the truth. I hope by instructing the setting up of a public inquiry, we've demonstrated that this government is seeking the truth. Well, I'm going to put that. Tagging off. I counted 20, maybe 21 times in that short speech, he said the word white. Now, in Scotland, right, the majority up here is like 95, 90, say 97, 98% white. Right? The rest is of different colour, different cultures, you name it. So the majority of these boys are going to go to university. They are going to apply for jobs like this in government. Yep. So, and in law, and in hospitals, and whatever. But for him to turn around and say, the, all those titles are held by white people, that is crazy. What does he expect us to do? Oh, sorry. Um, you've got the qualifications, but we need to take others on who haven't got the qualifications as such. Does he need just? Does he want us just? You know what I mean? Because that's just crazy. He can't do that. And I'd never heard about this speech until lately. Right, because of everything that's been going on in the UK. So, as I said, I have to be very careful what I say and what I post. I could get a knock on the door any time, depending on what I post or what I say. Now, I don't care what colour skin you are. I don't care what faith you believe you is a Jehovah's Witness, right? I I really don't like that religion, but I love my grand my nephew, but I just don't like the religion, right? And if that's his choice, that's his choice. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to put anyone down for their religion and their beliefs, and. All I want is people in this country to respect our culture, respect our laws, right? And I remember when I lived in Birmingham, I read some, I heard something about how some group, a Muslim group or whatever, was saying how their kids their children go to different schools. And I said, yes, because you started these schools. You've opened these Muslim schools up purposely for the Muslim children to go to. We're not saying you have to open them schools. We are saying they are welcome to come to our schools. But they have to uh, abide by our culture and our ways of educating, right? Now, my mum, she used to work in a Catholic school, right? But there was, I found out then, well, when my mum, I found this out very young, that there have to be a percentage of non-Catholic children go to these Catholic schools. And even though every morning or whatever they they would have their mass, right, for the Catholics. The other children just did whatever. Did, I don't know what the other groups and cultures of children did, but they didn't go to mass. 
the the Catholic children did, the other children, I don't know, supposedly had their own assembly or whatever. Right? I never really asked my mum now. And um, so they always have to have a percentage of non-Catholic children. And now, by the time my mum left that school, there's just as many Muslim, well, I should say non-Catholic children at that school as there was Catholic. So it wasn't just a percentage, it was literally 50-50. You know what I mean? So for them to say, oh, we're discriminated, we have to, our kids aren't welcome in your school, in the English schools, they are welcome. You just, it's just that they don't believe in what we teach, right? They want their children to learn the Quran, which is fine, fine. But in the English schools, we don't teach the Quran. For Christ's sake, we don't even teach, teach the children out in schools anything about the Bible. I remember when I was at school, we had religious education. They don't even do that now in schools. Right? They dropped that because of all the different cultures that was going to school, to the schools. Right? Because it was like, well, if you're going to talk about the Christians, well, you've got to talk about the Muslims and the Islamists and all that law. And you've got to talk about the uh, Hindus and the Sikhs, you name it. We've got, and it was just too much to take in. So they dropped religious education at school. And so when they say, oh, we had to, uh, we have to, our, our children aren't welcoming. Yes, they were. They were. You chose to send your children to these Muslim schools all Muslim schools. You won't accept any non-Muslim children, though. But our schools would accept everyone, any culture, everyone. But the Muslim schools would not accept anyone who wasn't Muslim. Now, who's the racist? And this was when my kids were little. And my kids are now... Both grown up, both got their own children, got their own families, got their own... So, this has been going on for years. And like I always, I said the other day when I seen that video in Birmingham, it broke my heart. Because it was literally five minutes from where I grew up as a child. I had... We used to meet up at, the, at that place, the YouTube. We used to meet friends as we went to school. We'd meet one at the bottom of the road, then we'd walk up and meet one at the top, up by the U-tree, and then we'd walk through the U-tree, meet another friend, and then we'd all... And that was... Love. It was it was always bustling. There was always people around there shopping, everything. There was always a lot of people around there at the shops. So to see how... A certain group behaved. Just broke me. You know what I mean? But I've been saying for years this would happen. But no one was listening. Been saying it for years. It was a like a, a you imagine like a, you've got a pressure cooker. Yeah? That pressure cooker has been bubbling away for years. For years. And now all of a sudden, it's just needed one thing. And it just took that one person to make that one post, which was misinformation. And I did say, you can't go on anything yet because the police haven't issued no information. You can't say, oh, is this, is that, whatever. You can't do that because it's misinformation. And because of that misinformation put out, after those three beautiful little girls died on the Tuesday, right? The riot started on the Tuesday night. All because of one post. And that post got spread about. I thought, you can't do that. You can't go round attacking mosques. You can't do anything like that. Not on, 
what someone just said on a Facebook page, you can't do that. It's like people say, I don't believe anything the media say. I really don't. And I don't believe what people say on a lot of these Facebook pages. Because it's just a lot of um, misinformation on a lot of Facebook pages. So you can't believe what people are saying at all on Facebook unless they can confirm it. As we say on the YouTube streets, we want receipts. Give us confirmation of where you got that information from. Because until you give us confirmation of where that information has come from, we are not going to utter a word about it. And that's why I never said anything on YouTube about the lad. Right? All I ever said was that he was an 18-year-old lad. I never made any assumptions as to his culture. Nothing. He was born in Cardiff. He's English. He was born in Cardiff. His parents moved over a few years before he was born. And then he was born in Cardiff. Then when he was about seven, they moved up to just outside of Southport. So he's born English. So for that to for the, anyone to put circulate that post was wrong. I will not and cannot condone any violence. And now we are being told on um, by our government if we share any videos showing we will be getting <laughs> Well, I'll put it this way. I'll have no YouTube account. Right? And I'll be getting a knock on the door. Or the red key, as we call it. The red key coming in. So, I will not post anything no more of anything. Unless I know it's a peaceful protest. And I mean peaceful where you've not got the, these football hooligan people ranks, those football ranks they do, right? The only peaceful protest I didn't, I, I saw, um, I didn't agree with how the police reacted to them and how they're just going in at the end of the night, during the night, and just picking them out, whoever. If they didn't like the look of your face, you got arrested. That was just out of order. Now, I looked up today, right, how many people have been arrested. And I'm going, I'm going to have to get my mouse. Oh, get back up there. All right, so here we are. More than 1,000 arrested following UK rights, police say, which I totally agree with. If they've been causing trouble, if they've been violent, if they've been smashing things up, setting things alight, attacking people, totally agree. It should not happen. You don't get anywhere with violence. You really, really don't. The only place you're going to end up is in prison. Right? So I can't condone the violence. It says British authorities have now arrested more than a thousand people following days of writing involving violence, arson and looting as well as racist, racist attacks targeting Muslims and migrants, and national poli policing bodies said on Tuesday. Right? Uh, the riots which followed the killings, the unaliving 
of three young girls in Northern, Northern English town of Southport began after the July 29th attack was wrongly blamed on an Islamist migrant based on online information. Right. After that, it literally just broke out all across different cities. But I think what it was, it was like the cherry on top of the cake, on top of the icing. And people had had enough. And yes, there was some groups of people coming in who were just out for trouble. There really was. But a lot of them was just like me. Parents, mothers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, concerned about the future of their children, their grandchildren, their nieces and nephews. Right? Many have been swiftly jailed, with some receiving long sentences. Well, I think the longest I've heard is three years. Right? But that's still a long time. It says that the, the rest included a 69-year-old accused of vandalism in Liverpool and an 11-year-old boy in Belfast. Christ. A 13-year-old girl pleaded guilty to violent disorder at Basingstoke Magistrates Court. Prosecutor said having been seen on July the 31st punching and kicking the entrance to a hotel for asylum seat. What the hell is a 13-year-old girl doing at something like that? I was watching that video, right, where they attacked a migrant hotel. And it was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And there's, like, ravaged dogs. There really was. And I was seeing a father there with his son. With his son. What are you doing? Why are you taking your children to things like this if you know there's going to be trouble? Right? Uh, this alarming incident will of course genuine fear amongst people who were being targeted by these thugs. I could imagine it would be. Uh, there was one woman who was trying to get inside, right, because her son worked there and she wanted to get to her son so she could get her son out of there. And this one YouTuber is going, you can't, you can't open them doors. If you even manage to get them doors open... That's going to, this lot here, it's just going to run in. You know what I mean? Because everyone there was like savage dogs. It was unbelievable. I thought, this is not how you protest. Yes, you may not like the fact that we've got migrants living in hotels or whatever. But you can't do that. And they're setting fires. Now, you know what? That, could co well, that, that charge carries. That charge in the UK can carry up to a life sentence, which is something like 20, 25 years. For setting, for arson. For arson. Right? Now, if that took, took hold, if that fire it really took hold, Right? How on earth would those people have got out of there? Because it was either we take on this fire or we go out there to the ravaged dogs. You know what I mean? Because these weren't concerned parents. These weren't. They were set, even when the police managed to get them away from the hotel, they were setting fire to the grass verges. And the neighbour, people who had houses uh, backing onto these grass verges, well, they having to come out with their own hoses over the fence to put these fires out. Because those fires will get set up onto their fences and gone towards their house. 
That's how crazy that was. But they're still setting fires. And I can't condone that. If it's a peaceful march or a peaceful protest, then fine. But you can't go around doing what they've done. But, i see if I can find it. Uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Uh, what was I looking for now? Uh, um, it's on YouTube. No, I've just gone blank. My mind has gone blank. Well, until my mind, until my memory comes back, it'll come back, don't worry. I'm going to show you this. Now, I will say this person has been arrested. He has also been suspended. I think he should be kicked out of the party, to be honest with you. But that's up to the Labour Party. That's not up to me. That's just my opinion. Right? But this is Ricky Jones. He was a Labour MP. Right? We've got children and women using those trains. It's doing the summer Olympics. They are disgusting, nasty factors. And we need to cull their throats and get rid of them all. I just want to say thank you all for leaving me down. And... Oh, I just want to go back. Hey, We've got children and women using those trains. It's doing the summer Olympics. They are disgusting, nasty factors. And we need to cull their throats and get rid of them all. This woman. This woman. From what I can make out, she's probably one of the organisers. She needs a resting because she was cheering what he said about their throats. She cheered and applauded and clapped. This woman, these people, this woman, these, they all cheered and applauded. <laughs> I just want to say thank you all for believing me down. And we, 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 thank you, God bless you all. Now, what the hell that Palestine thing had to do with that, I do not know. Because that wasn't even a march about Palestine. But he has been arrested. Now, from what I can understand, it was, uh, I'm going to see if I can pull it up. Um, what was his name again? Uh, Ricky Jones, wasn't it? Yeah. Ricky Jones. <sighs> yep. Not that well. What was the name again? Yeah. Oh, I've spelt it wrong. It's okay. Spelt it wrong. Right, let's see what they say here. Right. Let's see how so far. Right. 
And it says it here. I'm going to share this. I'm not going to pull it off. My. It says it here. Ricky Jones suspended Labour councillor charged with encouraging violent disorder. Now, a lot of people say, hold on, let me just sort my two cats out. They said they did. Leave him alone, Toby. Leave Bobby alone. You like this every time we come back. Right? And, um, encouraging violent disorder. Now, I've seen people going, being sent down for just posting things like, why should I pay this just to get, just so they, certain culture can get the houses and things like that. He wasn't threatening anyone. He wasn't threatening lives. He wasn't using uh, a weapon. But he got sent for, was it 20 months? 20 months. Let's see what he gets. He's been charged with encouraging violent disorder. I say he was encouraging unaliving. But that's just my opinion. Right? So we'll see. I'll be watching this very closely, what goes on with this guy. And we've just had two. Out of all those that was arrested, more than a thousand, I think that's in with the islands as well. More than a thousand. Out of them all, so far, only two are is, uh, Islamic faith or Muslim faith, whatever, have been charged and sentenced. And these two were using a weapon. They were... Uh, assaulting people in cars, you name it. it. It was terrifying. They get 20 months. Whereas a guy who just posted three little comments on three different posts gets 20 months. I leave that up to everyone's house opinion. Right? So... As I said, I have to be careful what I say. That's why I am not giving you my opinion on this. Full opinion. Um, because I have to be impartial. But I don't think our government, our policing, our judicial system is being impartial. I don't. If you've got someone being sent down for 20 months for posting comments like I wouldn't I why should I pay this when you when they get all the houses and things like that. I don't know the exact words he used. But it wasn't threatening. Oh and another post was he said something and then he said and it's and it will come to your town. Meaning about the rights it will come to your town eventually. Shut up. Well I hope it doesn't come to Dundee. I hope it doesn't come to Glasgow because my daughter lives down there. All right? But as I said, it, racism only exists because people like that ex first minister and this guy here bring it up in, bring it out, put it out there in public. I've never seen, in all the years I've lived here where I live, I've never seen anything. Of being anyone being racist towards anyone, nothing, right? And I hope it stays that way. I don't want all this to come to my to where I live because it, it will cause so much upheaval where I live if this was to come up here. It really would. So, we've got that guy who's, and as I said, do we feel safe in the UK? Personally, no. Because it only takes one person to have heard what he said in that video 
in that crowd and believe in what he says and actually act on it. Oh, for God's sake. No, no, I'm having both of you up here on the table. Go, go. Christ. If I had both of them up on the table, they'd be fighting on my table. Anyway, so it only takes one person to believe what they heard on that video, if we in the crowd or watching it, to act on it. So do I feel safe? No, I don't. Is our government going to do anything for us? I've yet to see this. Our Prime Minister, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, is our Prime Minister, I, in my opinion, is selling us out. And that isn't fair. It was, he got a majority vote. A hell of a landslide vote. And like I said, did people vote for him because they didn't want the Conservatives in or the Liberals in or UK reforming, right? Or did they vote for him because they truly believed in what Steve Karma had to say, his policies? And I said the, the other week, this is only going to get worse. And it is, because they're stifling us. They, it, the government are saying, we can't do this, we can't do that. They are like, locking us down, so we can't put anything out there ourselves. I can put something out there, if it's off the mainstream media, then I can put that out there. But if it's off a YouTube channel, then I can't put that out there. So, and this is why the government aren't liking X at the moment, because Elon Musk believes in free speech. We don't have free speech in England, in the UK. We really don't. We never have. Um, we've got a laws about when people speech about whatever, disrespecting another culture. We've got laws like that. But it's all right to disrespect the Christian culture and laugh about it, make jokes about it. We've grown up with that. But you do anything about another culture, then that's not on. That isn't on. But this is England. Right, and some of our some of the way we joke about things in in the UK can seem a bit, oh, that's a bit dark. That isn't right, but that's just the way we are in the UK. You know what I mean? We don't take anything too seriously, but now we are. Well, not we are. They are. Husbands, wives, aunts, uncles, you name it, they've had enough. They've had enough of this two-sided, well, you get 20 months for assaulting people, attacking cars and all that lot, but you can get 20 months for posting three little comments. That's a bit two-sided. We had one lad who got sentenced. I don't I don't know if he got sentenced or not. I'm going to have to check that one. But he was he was arrested for being a bystander. A bystander. He wasn't involved in the riots. He just seeing it going on. And was dug back away from the rioting, but he got arrested. He even left early when the writings really started getting going. He left. But they got him on camera before he left. And they picked him up. Because he was there. He wasn't involved. He was just a bystander. And like I was trying to say to my daughter, I said, you imagine now, um, something kicked off down the bottom of your road, or at the top of your road, up the grove, right? And you went out of your door, and you stood there, and you watched it. If you're caught on camera, you can be hugged up as a bystander. 
for being there. Even though you're outside your own house, you're in your garden, and you're just watching what's going on, you can be had as a bystander. And to me, that is crazy. Absolutely crazy. But we can post anything to do with the Palestinians, their marches. I won't be posting nothing on that. Because they are... They can be very nasty in what they say. They're calling us Nazis. They're calling us... Um... I am, Cos. Thank you. Thank you. It's hell at the moment. It's so scary. Because we have got these... The, what we call the lefties. Calling us Nazis and scum. And what is he? calling us racists, because, all because we want an end to all these illegal, not legal, illegal migrants coming into our country by boats. That is it. Because when they come into our country by boats, we don't know, they've got no paperwork on them, so we don't know if they've got any crimes in their own country. Now, I was told that if a migrant left their country and reached a, what they call a safe country, like France, then they, they should stay there. But no, you've got these people who was making money off them by getting them onto these little dinghies and bringing them over. Of course, if they've got the money, they're going to jump at that opportunity to get to the UK. But the, we, the government here was paying the French so much money a year to stop those boats coming over. But then these people in the boats realised that as long as I was in the water, the boat was in the water, and the people on the beach walked out to the boat and climbed into the boat that way, the French couldn't touch them. If the boats come on land, Harry said she wants to close detention centres. Whoa! No way! But... I swear to God, these cats are doing my head in tonight. <laughs> right? So, um, but I, I just heard there was a, a stabbing in New York. Was it last night? or I think it was last night. A Jewish guy got stabbed in New York. Right? So, it's everywhere. Right? And they call us Exact. What do they call us? Just because it's not because we we like the Jews or we whatever or we support the Jews, right? Exiling ex Zionist or something. They call us that, right? And I'm just fed up at being called far right. I'm not far right. I'm a mother and a grandmother who was just concerned. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I was watching it earlier on one of my channels I follow. And um, at first I thought it was the UK. I thought, not another one. But then I realised it was in New York. I thought, oh, my Lord. They're not safe. No one's safe anywhere. And it's scary world we, we are living in. Right? We had another incident yesterday. An 11-year-old girl. Now, the woman, who I believe is the mother, got a slight injury, but the bulk of the blood that was on that woman was from the young girl. So they thought she got injured bad as well because of the amount of blood on her. But it wasn't her blood, it was the little girl's. So, in, so from what I can work out, that incident that happened in Leicester Square, London, yesterday, this guy purposely went out to attack the 11-year-old girl. 
And if it wasn't for that guy who was in the cafe next door, heard and saw what was going on, and as soon as he saw the knife, he jumped on the guy, took him down, got the knife off him. Well done to that guy. He probably saved that little girl's life. Right? And he's, I believe, he's of a um, possible Muslim. Right? But he protected, and as a certain person I, I do follow said, and I agree, if you show that you love, I don't care, as I keep saying, I don't care what colour your skin is, what religion you follow, I don't. As long as you uh, show you love this country as much as we do, as long as you respect our laws, and our culture, as much as we do, then we've got no problem. But when you, they're coming over here and they don't like this country, they don't respect our laws, they're only here for the money and the housing, then they don't like our laws, they disrespect our laws, they think they can do whatever they want, then that's not on. It's not fair on the other communities, the other cultures. And I'd say the same for in, uh, the USA. If they come over and they respect your culture, your laws, and everything, I'm sure a lot of you would say, no problem. They're going to work. They're working hard. They're paying into the, the taxes and everything else. You know what I mean? They respect our culture. They've got their own culture, but we, they respect our culture. Then fine. I'm sure you'd have no problem with them. But it's when they don't respect our culture. Or because there's a... Like, at the moment, you, there's that Palestinian and Israel thing with the Jews going on. So if you've got Jews in your community, yeah, and you've got Palestinians... And the Palestinians don't like the Jews. Then they're going to attack the Jews. Which isn't on. You can't do that. If you come into another country, you have to abide by their, their laws. And their laws is everyone is free to follow their own culture. You abide by our laws, yes. But you can follow your own culture as long as you abide by our laws. So, uh, it's just scary, and as I said, I'm learning to say F you in so many different languages, because I'm one for, I can be walking down the road and I can go for F safe, I see something and I'll just say the word. If, if they implement that law in Scotland, I'm done for. Right, I am absolutely done for. Because the F word just is, rolls off my tongue some days. It really does. Right, depending on what we're talking about. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to, oh, I'm going to have it set on my phone. So instead of saying it myself, I'll just hit a button and it'll say it automatically off my phone. <laughs> Oh, I've got a little record, you haven't got yet? I've got a little hangout record. I'll, I'll tape it off my phone and then I'll keep my little recorder on me and every time I want to say the F word, I'll just hit the recorder so it can say the recording in French so I can't be had. <laughs> because I, yes, I recorded it, but I recorded it in French. Or record it in Spanish or German or Italian or whatever else. But apparently that's been a, a law that's been in place for years. It's never been implemented. And it's now been implemented. They are trying to... It's like someone said, are we living in Russia? You know what I mean? Are we living in Russia? The way they are stopping off and 
for trying to control what we say and what we do. You know what I mean? The UK will not survive five years of this Labour government. Not with Keir Starmer in it, I don't believe. In my opinion, it will not survive it. And I can't see Keir Starmer surviving. He's probably, he'll be kicked out. The Labour Party will run and gone because their ratings are going down and down and down. All these people that voted for him, and I say, I didn't vote for that. I haven't voted for this. What the hell? You know what I mean? So his ratings are going down. And, but something I heard yesterday, which is a bit scary, is there's a woman who holds the top spot. Hold on, I'll see if I can find it uh, on YouTube. Right? Um, let's have a look. There it is. I found it. This is credit to right. Hold on. Let me just put the credit up. Just credit this guy. Um. Right, I'll just put 2C TV. Right. Credit. Right. Uh, let's sort this out a minute. <sighs> I need to sort this out. Um. There, that's better. So, this, I subscribe to his channel, and he's a news media channel, so he keeps us up to date. If anything comes out, he's online, he's going live, right? So he keeps us up to date. If you don't watch him, if you're in the UK, subscribe to this guy. He's quite funny as well, he is. And, um... But he keeps us up to date with everything going on. And as I said, a lot of people don't trust the media. They don't. And to be honest with you, I don't think he does either. But there's a clip in here, which I want to find. Um, also bursting, because the honeymoon period for Keir Starmer's socialist government has truly ended. In this video, we're going to give you guys all the updates about the power struggle in number 10 Downing Street and the chaos that is our government. And of course, we'll get your reaction live as usual. And if you want to get one of these lovely t-shirts, you can get it in the description. United the Kingdom. I'm going to order one of them, but I want it in a, not a t-shirt. I want a sweatshirt. But you can also get the mugs and you can get the caps. Like the caps, I want the cap. Okay, let's talk about Sue Gray. Now, I'll give you a summary in case you don't know Sue Gray. She was once an impartial and professional civil servant. She was a bureaucrat, not party political. Suddenly, she jumped ships and joined the Labour Party as the chief of staff to Keir Starmer when he was the leader of opposition. You all know that. She's now one of the most powerful people in this kingdom. She's the chief of staff to the prime minister. Of course, the prime 
Prime Minister also has other individuals, including Morgan McSweeney. You can see him over here. He's also the top political advisor in number 10 Downing Street. And let's just say mommy and daddy are not getting along. And Oh, what's happening? Oh. Getting along and the children are crying. Civil servants are not happy. Political advisors are falling apart part sue gray apparently is a control freak who knew who would have thought but let's find out what's going on a whitehall source has said uh, that there was it was reported to have said that uh, she thinks sue gray she th thinks she runs the country and made disquiet uh, over her powerful role within the government now there were a number of uh, uh, people who were complaining about alistair campbell at the time about 25 years ago or so, with Tony Blair's government. Now, Alistair Campbell had a very specific job. He was the head of communications, director of communications, right? Sue Gray, at least, she is the chief of staff. Technically, she's more justified to be a control freak, but there is a limit. The problem we have is that this government is becoming extremely centralized more than ever before. Keir Starmer is holding national security meetings on a daily and weekly basis, some people have been pushed out. We already reported a few weeks ago that Angela Rayner, the Deputy Prime Minister, has already been pushed out of certain meetings. Sue Gray is taking complete control. It seems like it's not even Keir Starmer running the country. It's Sue Gray. Who elected Sue Gray? Nobody. Not even her own parents. Now, it is understood that uh, Mc, um, Sweeney disputes all the claims made about him. He's the top advisor. Uh, and number 10 and Sorry insiders have this, this the idea that the prime minister could be blocked told, from receiving important security, security because, information. This is completely com getting out of control now. Prime minister not receiving sensitive information and getting their own people who are complaining about him to go to the press and media to basically pretend yeah. everything is fine. Yeah, we, we can confirm we are giving everything to the prime minister. Uh, He's absolutely well informed. This is sure, sure. Out. Now, Sue Gray is the most senior political official. Hold on. I'm gonna... For some reason, my stream, it won't take me back to my stream yard. Uh, this is doing my heading. Why won't it take me back to my stream yard? This is ridiculous. Are you causing me problems? Hold on. I think my cat's going on wired. You go down there. Yeah, I think you're lying on my wires. Shush up. Oh, give it a rest. Why won't we... Ah, I'm back. I'm back on my stream yard. I'll share the screen again. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous now. Get off. What is going on? Oh. I'm trying to share the screen. And it's not... Oh, is it up there now? Again, it won't. Oh, I think it's my mouse. Because it won't. Well, I'm just going to. Because I'm posting something about whatever. Because this is not working for me. Come on, let me get back onto my StreamYard studio. Oh, 
Why am I not dead? No. Why am I not... Right, now try again. Nope, it's not going to let me. Right. I don't know what the hell is going on, but for some reason, it's my stream yard is playing up big time. And it's as soon as I present something on my screen. See what I mean? Hi. Come on. Oh, this is annoying. I swear to God, I hate this internet. Because it's starting to do my heading now. Because for some reason. Official in number 10, she said to have uh, tried to block uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. McSweeney uh, from having access to a secure government IT system. This is a little bit problematic. Now, if it's true, regardless of the reason she's doing this, it's a national security issue as well because his... I don't know if you can hear that, but I can't even get onto my stream yard. I can see if any comments come up. But I can't get onto my screen yard. And it's starting to bug the life out of me. Because I can do everything else. I can get onto anything else. I just can't get onto my screen yard. And it's showing up there. But I'm not sure if you're getting the... Right, I'm going to have to go out of StreamYard. I'll be right back in. Be right back in. Right, I'm back. Yes, it's working because my little picture is flickering. Sorry about this. For some, I think we've got some strong winds outside. I'm sitting in my balcony now, where I do all my live streams and my videos. Everything is in my balcony, and my windows are shaking. That's how strong the winds are. So it's a bit scary sometimes when you sit in, you can see that. Let's see if I can get back to this. Sorry about this, everyone. But this guy is a great... He does keep you up to date with everything that's going on. So hopefully it'll work better now. And my stream yard won't play up. Right, let's start. So, so far, what it is said is Miss Gray, who's the most senior politi political official in number 10, is literally taking control of everything that is being said and done. Right, it says here, Miss Gray, most senior political official in number 10, is said to have tried to block Mr. McSweeney, from having access to a secure government IT system. Now, if we go back, right, this is Mr. Max, 
bring it and you'll hear about him again okay so we'll start from here again because a lot of it i don't think you got to hear in this kingdom she is the chief of staff to the prime minister of course the prime minister also has other individuals including morgan mcsweeney you can see him over here he's also the top political advisor in number 10 downing street and let's just say mommy and daddy are not getting along and the children are crying. Civil servants are not happy. Political advisors are falling apart. Sue Gray apparently is a control freak. Who knew? Who would have thought? But let's find out what's going on. A Whitehall source has said uh, that it was, it was reported to have said that uh, she thinks Sue Gray, she thinks she runs the country. And made this quiet uh, over her powerful role within the government. Now, there were a number of uh, uh, people who were complaining about Alistair Campbell at the time, about 25 years ago or so, uh, with Tony Blair's government. Now, Alistair Campbell had a very specific job. He was the head of communications, director of communications, right? Sue Gray, at least, she is the chief of staff. Technically, she is more justified to be a control freak, but there is a limit. The problem we have is that this government is becoming extremely more than ever before. Keir Starmer is holding national security meetings on a daily and weekly basis. Some people have been pushed out. We already reported a few weeks ago that Angela Rayner, the deputy prime minister, has already been pushed out of certain meetings. Sue Gray is taking complete control. It seems like it's not even Keir Starmer running the country. It's Sue Gray. Who elected Sue Gray? Nobody. Not even her own parents. Now, it is understood that uh, Mc um, Sweeney disputes all the claims made about him. He's the top advisor. Uh, and number 10 and insiders have dismissed the idea that the prime minister could be blocked from security information. This is completely com getting out of control now. Prime Minister not receiving sensitive information and getting their own people who are complaining about him to go to the press. Here we go again. Media. We are giving everything to the Prime Minister. He is absolutely well informed. Sure, sure. Now, Sugra is the most senior political official. In number 10, she said to have uh, tried to block uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. McSwing. This is a little bit problematic. Now, it's true. Regardless of the reason she's doing this, it, it's a national security uh, issue as well. Oh, because... His communication by anybody not able to get access to a secure government IT system, if it's true, that's a very, very bad thing anyway. Okay. Now, Sue Gray, uh, I'd say one of the sources in number 10, said it has got to a point where we have said that the prime minister needs to be given an intelligence briefing. And Sue Gray has said, tell me instead. But we need to know that it ha has actually reached him. Keir Starmer doesn't seem to be, she's not, he's not in charge. You are. Well, he's clearly not in charge. Certain people who are behind Barack Obama are in charge. saying is this Miss Gray is actually trying to control. This is what the source has said, where instead of certain people being able to get the information direct to the Prime Minister, she's saying, give it to me, tell me. You know what I mean? But then if they tell her, is that actually reaching the Prime Minister? And that, I think that's pretty scary. If the information the Prime Minister and he's thinking oh it's all good right 
Now, the other week, last week, there was supposed to be 100 protests all over the UK by the right wing, right? As they call it, people, as they call us. There isn't enough members. If the right wing exists, there isn't enough members to be in 100 towns or cities across the UK. And it was said that that information was false. After, after that day, when the only people that turned up were those protesters who was protesting the protest. You know what I mean? They was there, these protesters are there to protest against everyday people like me who just care about the future of the UK and the future for their children and their grandchildren. But none of the right wing, right wing people that they call us, turned up because there was no such protest planned, right? So it made it look like, oh, look, we scared them off. We've got all noise and peace now. We haven't had no protests by any group whatsoever from the parents, from families, who are scared about what's going on in the UK. There's been no protests at all. Since the last protest, the actual official protest that they did was on a Wednesday night, two days after the three little girls died, right, they did a protest and a march up to Westminster, number 10. But they were stopped from reaching number 10, the gates. And then they were kettled into an area. And as the time went on, they were just kettling people into certain areas and then sending police in. And we overheard them say, arrest whoever you want. Arrest anyone. Right? There's a guy who was obviously caught up in it all because he was there with his suit and his briefcase. So he's obviously, obviously got caught up in all this on his way home from work. They even arrested a news reporter, a TV news reporter, but then someone recognised who he was, so they re released him. Right? They was arresting anyone. And since that protest, there wasn't flares going off. It was them, you know, them things that you pull and you get the blue smoke or the pink smoke or the white smoke. It was them. It was them sort of smoke bombs. Right? It wasn't flares. And um, since that night, after all those arrests, over 100 arrests were made that night. A peaceful march has not gone on, has not happened. We've had riots, and we have had some protests, but they've been really quiet now. And the police have turned... There have been protests, I'll say that much, and got, like, the right wing on one side, you've got the left is on the other side of the road. And you've got like a hundred armed police facing the right wing and 10 or 20 police facing the left wing. And the left wing are calling up, calling them Nazis, scum, everything. They have been called every name you can think of by, this, by the lefties. So, and then they... Kettled them, well, they hugged up them into an area and kept pushing them back down this walkway. Right? And then it all went off by, a, I think it was a church or a park, a church or a building of some sort. And one 
of the YouTubers actually got hit on the head by something that the left wing people had thrown. Right? So he got seen to him like a trooper. He got seen to. I'm not sure if they sorted him out in the ambulance and glued it up, cleaned it up and glued it up in the ambulance or if he went to A&E. But he was back there again filming. He went straight back there filming. And it went on for hours. Hours. But finally, it, it calmed down. Everyone went home. Right? But they was turning their attention on to what they call the right-winged people. And they're not all right-winged. Some of them don't even know what... I don't even know what it means to be right-winged. All I know is I'm a mother and a grandmother who, who care about the future of her grandchildren, the future for my own children, my own kids with their own, with, in their own families. You know what I mean? So it just... I just don't understand how they can... They've classed a few troublemakers who are right-wing, who have infiltrated these protests, right? And they've classed us all as right-wing. That isn't fair to do that, because we're not. And that's what people are saying, that... They don't understand the problem. They're not listening to what the people are saying. They're just classing us as right-wing troublemakers. That's it. So it was put out that we were supposed to be having 100 protests all across the UK. No one turned up apart from those 30 towns or cities where they had the pro protesters who protest against the right-wing. and. They are all full of Palestinians and all that lot, and all they they chant something like um, "refugees are welcome here." Well, I'm sorry if you think illegal refugees are welcoming our country, then please house them, have them in your home, save the taxpayers some money instead of having them put up in hotels. Have them in your home. Right? But, um, so since that one night, there hasn't been no protest, peaceful protests. There have been protests. But after that one, when they said there was being a hundred protests going on, after that night, there's been no protests by anyone except for the Palestinian groups. Right? And, the protests by the um, Muslims and things like that. We've had attacks. That's what I'm saying. I don't feel safe. At the moment, I'm okay. But if it's to hit where I live, where I live in Dundee, it's only small. It's not a, a big town. It's, a, it's actually called Dundee. It is a, it's a city. Yeah. Because Prince Philip made the mistake once in public by calling it a city, right? They had to call it a city then because Prince Philip had called it a city. So we're well, not that big. So if that all started up here, it would be horrendous. And there's other places like 15 miles away from where I live, which is absolutely gorgeous. I lived there once in a place called Forfu. And if you never see anything like that up there, no racists at all. Even though there are some multicultural people that live up there, you don't see nothing like that. So we don't need that coming up here. We don't because... We are all getting on fine as it is because you don't have areas in Dundee. We do not have specific areas where it's just a certain culture. Like in Birmingham, you've got areas which is specifically for Muslims, 
and then you got specifically for Hindus, specifically for Chinese. You know what I mean? You got all these specific areas where in Dungji, because it isn't that big, they can't afford so well. We'll just have this area here. Keep that for like the Muslims or the Sikhs or Hindus or Buddhists, whatever, right? They don't do that. Everyone lives next door to each other. And everyone, from what I see, everyone gets on with everyone. The only fighting I see is from the, dr the drunks or from those who have been injecting too much and are walking around like zombies, right? That's the only thing I see in Dundee. I don't see no racist. I really don't. And I'm not walking around with blinkers on. If people come around to me and say, are you blind? I say, I must be, because I don't see it. When I've gone into the city centre, I don't see it. When I've gone to the parks, I don't see it. So it would be devastating if that was could come up to Dundee. Devastating. Anyway, so we've got a Prime Minister, we've got a woman, Miss Gray, the most senior political official in number 10, who thinks she is in control. Obviously, because is half of this information getting back to the Prime Minister? Is he even watching TV? But then again, mainstream media only report what the lefties are doing. It's They don't report what we do, the everyday parents are saying. They're not reporting anything like that. Of course, out of all the arrests they've made, and sentences they've sent people to prison for. They've only sent two who are not who are non English to prison. Really? After what I saw in Birmingham the other night? And after what I've seen in other towns where they're running through the streets saying Allah whatever throwing rubbish all over the streets. Uh, raid in the shops, and yet there's only been two arrests. Anyway, so I advise, and I'll put his link in the description because you should go and sign up to him if you're watching on replay. Please go and sign up to him. He's there. He does. He goes out daily, two, three times a day. He's even been, even when he was on holiday the other week, he was still reporting every day, two, two times at least, minimum twice a day, he was reporting. And he was on a holiday. So he's still keeping us up to date with what was going on. Because we only hear, otherwise, we only hear what mainstream media want us to hear. And that isn't fair. So... So, Bridget Barra says, guys, I don't know, Trump might win this one. I'm scared for boom, 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 boom. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you, Vic Bridget. Oh, God, my cats are still at it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Because, as we know, Keir Starmer isn't doing anything. Of the British at the moment, he isn't. Christ, we've even had the police doing uh, like a press release once. They did this into this press thing, and they started off in what language is it they use? I can't think. And I'm thinking, what? Ooh, what? I'm going, no, 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 that isn't right. And they finished it with a goodbye, as in goodbye, in this other language. I'm going, why don't we just go through the French, the German, the Italian, the Spanish, the, and everything else, then, and say hello and goodbye in all those languages? 
you know what I mean? And then stood behind this car park, this one police officer, when he's giving this interview, of the um, Muslim, uh, whatever you call them, the, the, the top men, yeah? And this one cop, I think, looked a bit scared, a bit intimidated by it all. That's my opinion. I'll see if I can find it, actually. I'll see if I can find it. Mm. Let's see. Let's see what we can find. Mm. Oh, God. I can't find you. I can't find you. Um, but I the start of the interview with Greek saying hello in Islam. I'm finishing with the Islam, whatever they call it. I'm going, no, that isn't right. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it there because I, I don't go too, for, too much further because I'm likely to get blocked but all i will say is i'm going to take this off take that off and take that down shut up I swear to god this cat shut up hi all i can say we just Got to hope and pray some changes in the future because we can't go on like this. We can't. Every day there's something happening. Every day there's an attack somewhere or some groups raging through the streets causing havoc. You know what I mean? I just feel those two that they sent down, those two Muslims, Guys, they sent down was like a token, but we've got to send some down, you know what I mean? Out of 600, we've got to send two of them down. But our jails are full, and yet they've confined space to put these bystanders for just being there. Christ, you could be walk. They arrested one woman at that march on the Wednesday on the protest. And she was just walking up the street and they arrested her. She was 70, she was looking good for her age, 73. And this woman, was police officer, was putting handcuffs on her. And uh, she don't make to this police officer, can, can you not do that? And he told her, being a bit sarcastic. And this police officer said, I'm trying to lock, lock them. So then they will release and won't be so tight. Say, no, you're not. So you're tightening them. I'm 73 years old. I came here for these three precious little girls that died. 
to share my support. And I'm walking up the road and you arrest me. Oh my God. But that's what I mean. They arrested as an old lady. They were putting women on the floor and handcuffing them. It wasn't right. So I can understand why these parents and whatever don't want to go out on these marches no more. Because they know that the police will just turn on them. Because they don't want these groups out there who are protesting about the way the country is being run. About what is going on in the country. They don't want protesters out there about that. But it's all right to have protesters go and run them off and cause a scared life out of people or just go and buy a car and carry knives and whatever else they want to carry, attack a bloke out inside on the pub grounds. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's all right for all that, but you can't protest quietly. Anyway, I am going to leave it at that because, as I said, I'm getting into dangerous territory here. So I have to be careful. But let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments. If you're on X, leave me a comment. Show me some love. Uh, what have we got here? Comments. Come on. Unbelievable. It is, M cars. It's unbelievable what's going on in the UK. And people, people don't know if they are safe to reply to a comment. They don't know if they, if they share something. If they go and get a knock on the door by the police. If they put a comment on something, will they get a knock on the door by the police? They just don't know where they stand. And that's why I'm saying I have to tread very carefully with where, what I say and what I and where I go, right? But what I will say, I will put this out there, I do not and cannot condone any violence, not even in uh, a tweet or a comment. Someone puts a post up and you put a, a very aggressive, violent comment back, then that that's not right, right? Uh, I don't believe in these riots. It's disgusting. Utterly disgusting. But I don't like the fact that we've got two groups of people on the other side of the road and that one on the left is calling us Nazis and scum and uh, racists and all this lot. X and, and what are they, oh, something to do with the Jews, right? And yet when we say anything back, they're handcuffing them, they're arresting them. It's not fair. So, as I said, man, thank you for that, MCOS. I am trying to be so careful with what I say and what I post. Even when I'm on Twitter, I'm being very careful whether I like the post or should I like this post or oh, don't know I could get a knock on the door should I leave a come oh I don't know I could get a knock on the door I can't swear outside no more I'm fat I really gotta learn that French <laughs> <coughs> I really gotta learn French I teach French at school but we didn't learn how to say certain words in French. <laughs> My son learned Spanish. Well, he took Spanish. And I said, don't take Spanish, son. You're not going to like it. Stay with French. You've been doing French all your life. Because I know at the junior school, they did do a little bit of French. You know what I mean? I hang, no, no, I want to do Spanish. In the end, I ended up going up there. Because his teacher, as soon as he'd walk in the classroom, without saying a word, the teacher would put him in detention. I can't, cause I can't learn Polish. There's too many Polish, there's Polish people about, so I can't learn that. <laughs> I'm just, I've got a little tape recorder. And I bought it a while ago. So what I'm going to do, 
and I can get on with pens like this jar, is I'm going to record certain sayings on here on my little tape, my mini little recorder, right? And then when, instead of saying it myself, I'll hit the phone, record it off my phone, so then in future when I want to say something bad, I can just go, hmm, okay, yeah, there you go. I haven't said it. But, you know, uh, there's, too, there's a lot of Polish in Dundee. But they're lovely, you know what I mean? Don't have any trouble off them. Well, I've never had any trouble off the Polish. They've got their stores, their shops, where they sell their Polish food. That's fine. We've got mosques in Dundee. Now, as I said, Dundee isn't very big, but I know we've got at least two mosques, I believe. There might only be one. But I'm sure there's a second one somewhere. So we do have a fair few Muslims. There must be quite enough Muslims to have a mosque. But that's their choice. That's their religion. I don't care. Just don't push it on me. I'm not interested. You have your life. I've got my life. That's how we leave it. And that's why I've said... On this channel, I will never talk politics or religion. And I am doing hard about tonight, doing tonight, because it is a bit political. Right? But um, it's also what is going on in the UK. And I just feel like we're being stifled, like... Like we're in Russia, we can't say certain things, we can't. It's like the UK are trying to get, trying to ban X in the UK. That's fine, bang it. I'll just get a UPN number or account. Right, and then I can put my, say I'm in America somewhere and still go on Twitter, bang it. Because by banging X, it just means X is going to get a lot more following. That it, a lot more people are using X now. Because uh, Elon Musk is not stifling us. He believes in free speech. Right? And he's actually supporting the British people. And if the UK bang X, right? from anyone in the UK being able to get on X, you're just going to have a lot of people go, OK, I'll sign up and get a VPN account. That way they can say they, they are in the USA or in another country, right, to go on X. Yeah, we've got to fork out more money, but if it means that, then I'll do that. Because they're not going to try and stop my my voice. That's how I feel. I feel like our voices are being stopped. Yeah? And it shouldn't be like that. Was People are scared to go outside. Right? I live in a multi, a tower block. <laughs> and I get in that lift sometimes. I'm thinking, please, don't, no one else get in this lift. Please don't. No one else better not get in this lift. And all the way up the floors until I get to my floor, it's like, don't stop at any other floor. Keep going, keep going right up to my floor. Please just keep going to my floor. I've always been like, I've been like it since I've moved in this block. I, I don't like lifts. I don't like, I'm very claustrophobic. Like, I won't even sit in my balcony where I am now. Right, with my balcony door shut. Because I feel too closed in. I'm all right with the door open. But close that door and I will go into major, major meltdown, panic attacks. Especially if I couldn't open it. Right. Um, so I don't like lifts for that reason. But 
it's just scary now to think people are, could be walking the streets in England and anyone could just attack them. Not like that little girl yesterday. You know what I mean? That should never have happened. And I believe it was from... Where was it from now? Um, I think he was Polish. I think this guy was Polish. Was the Polish? I can't remember now. They did say where he was from. Right. And it's quick to tell us this one. But if it had been a, a Muslim, they wouldn't have told us anything. They wouldn't have said what his name was. They wouldn't have told. All I just said was, we've arrested a 20-some-year-old male. They wouldn't have told us his name, his, his, his culture, nothing. So, like, as soon as they don't tell us that information, people know already. But those quick to come out and say, he is not of a of a white race, white race. And you could see, you got a picture of him. And I thought, yeah, he's more, oh, God, um, possibly like that. And he targeted that 11-year-old girl, because the, the woman who, who got injured was only slightly injured. They might, all that blood on that woman wasn't her blood. It was from the little girl. So he perfect, he, this guy specifically went out and that's it, because, yeah, Romanian, yeah. He used to, apparently he had a business. Now, to see, he was talking about him earlier. He had a business in the UK and it got dissolved in 2019. He now, he was, he had a house, he was li living in the UK, he had a house, he had his own business, but his business got dissolved in 2019. He obviously lost his home because he had no work. I don't know, but he, apparently he's of no. Uh, no, about no um, address, so he's classed as homeless. But there's quick enough to tell us all that information. But if he'd have been a Muslim, they wouldn't have said nothing, they would not have said, the word. and that's the worst thing they can do because then you do get these people coming about saying, Oh, he's Muslim, oh, he's this, he's this, and it's not true. So the best thing they can do, if anything like this happens, is just come out straight away and tell us. Right? Because it doesn't matter. I don't care what faith he is, what country he comes from. You know what I mean? It could have been an American, for all I care. Because at the end of the day, a child was attacked. And that's all I care about is the fact that this person specifically went out and targeted this little girl. You know what I mean? I don't care where they come from. I care about the children that are getting injured. Right? So, I'm going to leave it at that, but I will put the link in, in the description for 2CTV. Brilliant. Go and join. Go and subscribe to him. If you're watching on replay, go and subscribe to him. It's really, really good. And um, stay safe. Oh, please like this video. Share this video if you can. If you feel safe enough to share it, share it. If you don't feel confident in sharing it because, then don't. Right. Um, leave us a comment. Thank you for joining us in chat. Cars and the others that were here earlier. I don't know where they all went, but they went somewhere. Robin was here earlier. I don't know where she went. But yes. But no, um, I will stay. I'm going to stay safe. I don't go out that much as it is. So. 
this is just even more terrifying, you know what I mean? That's why I don't want it to come to where I live. I really don't, because if this comes up here, I will not be stepping out my front door. Because you won't even get me in that lift. You won't. You know what I mean? I'll have all my shopping delivered to me. I do now most of the time. I'll get most of my shopping delivered to me. Not very often I'll go out and do a shop. I have it delivered. But occasionally, like tomorrow, I do have to go out and get my cat food. I need some more biscuits for the little feckers. Anyway, I'll keep you informed as to how I'm getting on with my French, and my Spanish, and my German, and my Italian. <laughs> so, I'll stay safe, everyone, and I will see you tomorrow. Will I be doing a live tomorrow? Possibly be doing a live, but it'll be I don't know whether I'll to do it in the afternoon again or in the evening. I might do it in the afternoon again. I kind of enjoy doing it in the afternoon. So anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Please, if you're watching on replay, as I said, give this video a like. Leave me a comment. If you don't feel comfortable in sharing, don't share it. I'll just say, don't share the video, okay? And unless you're very daring and want to share it. But I've said nothing on here that could cause any harm. Because I don't agree with any... I don't agree with what's going on in the UK at the moment. Right? So anyway, so everyone, please stay safe. And I'll see you all next time. Oh, sorry, not yet. Now. It's not playing my end titles.